Hey everyone, welcome in where tonight's topic is going to be about some of the politics of the Reconstruction era. And inevitably, we have to begin with uh, one of the more interesting developments ever in American presidential history, which is the impeachment of Andrew Johnson. Yes, that word impeachment is really the focal point for the beginning of the video tonight. And impeachment is something that occurs uh, it's a power within the Constitution as a form of checks and balances. It's a process in which a federal uh, government official may be removed from office if that official does something to violate the law. This protected the integrity of the Constitution in that politicians uh, are not exempted from the law. In other words, you know, crim you know, presidents can't break the law. Congressmen, congresswomen, Supreme Court justices, uh, they, th these elected officials cannot be held uh, above the law. They they must be accountable for their actions. And so, within the Constitution, there is the power of impeachment. So, a little bit of background about impeachment. And impeachment is actually a power of Congress. Congress has to decide whether or not to impeach. And so impeachment is a two-step process. And the first step starts in the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives must vote whether to impeach an elected official from the federal government. If the House of Representatives votes to impeach an elected representative of the federal government, then the Senate, because of checks and balances and, and separation of powers, the Senate then must vote as well. But in the Senate, the vote is not to whether to impeach. The, the vote in the Senate is to convict and there's a big difference there. So to impeach means that the House um, has voted. And I want to just pull up something off the Internet here to look up. Um, that's why you hear my typing. This, the House of Representatives votes to impeach. And when it says that a person was impeached, that just means that the House um, voted to impeach the person. However, the Senate then must confirm and convict and that's where um, really um, you get into the realm of somebody would actually be removed. So to be removed from office, you would actually have to be both impeached in the House and convicted in the Senate. The process of impeachment had really never been performed at the highest level of the presidency until Andrew Johnson's presidency. And we've talked about Andrew Johnson enough so far in class that you know that Andrew Johnson was a very controversial president. Now Johnson, who had butted heads with those radical Republicans, here's where Johnson and the radical Republicans are going to be at it again once more. And when it comes to Johnson and the radical Republicans, uh, basically what the radical Republicans did is effectively they passed a law uh, in Congress, which said that Johnson could not fire or remove any of Lincoln's cabinet members. And this was done um, by the radical Republicans to limit Johnson's power. And the radical Republicans were very fearful of Johnson taking on too much power. And so they passed a law that says he could not remove any cabinet members uh, who had been appointed and confirmed uh, under Lincoln. Johnson played right into the hands of Congress when, in 1867, Johnson fired or tried to fire one of Lincoln's secretary cabinet members, Edwin Stanton. Johnson <laughs> tried to fire Edwin Stanton even after he had vetoed the uh, Tenure of Office Act. So Johnson fires the guy, Edwin Stanton. Um, <laughs> this was an incredibly shocking moment, and I'm only laughing because it kind of is just humorous the way this all played out. Johnson was trying to actually put Ulysses S. Grant as the new Secretary of War. Um, and so ultimately, uh, Johnson himself tried to get rid of Stanton, and that's when Congress snapped into action and... The story goes, one of my favorite stories about the impeachment of Andrew Johnson and this whole firing of Edwin Stanton is that ultimately, ultimately, um, 
Edwin Stanton, upon news of learning he, 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 he was fired, he refused to leave his position. He refused to even leave his office. And he barricaded himself inside his office where allegedly he cried and sobbed uh, for, for the whole d uh, d process of what was being dismissed. Um, <laughs> and so ultimately, ultimately, Edwin Stanton was set to be fired. But here's where Congress decided to impeach Andrew jo Johnson. And so the House of Representatives voted to impeach Johnson. That passed in the House. So Andrew Johnson became the first president ever to be impeached because he f tried to fire one of Lincoln's cabinet members. But as I mentioned earlier now, the impeachment only means that the Senate must convict. And that's where Johnson failed to be convicted. When the Senate voted, they failed to receive a two-thirds majority vote to convict Johnson of a crime. And so Johnson was able to remain in office despite the fact that he was impeached. He was not removed from office. But you want to talk about awkward. Johnson had to finish the rest of 1868. He finished Lincoln's term in very awkward conditions, and he would no doubt uh, have a rough uh, patch to go through as he finished up his presidency. Uh, but Johnson will go down in history as one of two presidents ever to be impeached. Andrew Johnson is the first, but not the last. Bill Clinton was impeached later uh, in the late 1990s for lying under oath uh, when he was asked to testify about an extramarital affair that he carried on with a White House intern named Monica Lewinsky. Clinton lied about his association to, to Monica Lewinsky, and he was impeached uh, by, by the House. But again, like Johnson, Clinton was not convicted, so he remained in office. So where do we go from here? Andrew Johnson's impeached, but he's still in office. Well, 1868 was an election year. In 1868, uh, another war hero, this is a common trend in U.S. history as we know, a war hero was going to rise to the occasion. And a war hero uh, like Ulysses S. Grant was the perfect Republican candidate. And Ulysses S. Grant is going to um, become the Republican candidate. And he would go up against um, the Democratic candidate named uh, Seymour. I, I forget Seymour's first name, but Seymour was the Democratic candidate. Uh, and the election of 1868 is rather significant because this is, sorry Mr. Cash, I'm in the middle of uh, recording a video. Uh, the election of 1868 is rather significant because this is the first election in which African American males could participate. States have begun to give African American males the right to vote. Eventually, as we know, we had the 15th Amendment, uh, which guaranteed the, uh, by the federal government blacks rights, black, black males right to vote. And this is the first vote in which African-American males can participate. And I have some political cartoons I'm going to show you all uh, tomorrow, as long with the election results. Grant would win uh, pretty handedly. But um, the election of, of Ulysses S. Grant in 1868 is the next step here in Reconstruction. And what we're going to look at tomorrow is how, because of the African-American male right to vote, the South is going to really up its resistance to Reconstruction. And here's the turning point in Reconstruction. The black male right to vote is going to increase the violence. Remember this for tomorrow. A severe increase in violence is going to occur now with the 15th Amendment being passed. And with blacks now having the right to vote, this is going to have a dramatic effect on the relationship for African Americans in the South. And we'll be talking about measures in which um, the southern states tried to stop blacks from voting, and that's where we get violent, and that's where we get extreme. I'll leave you with that all tonight. Uh, feel free to ask questions tomorrow about impeachment, the, impe the impeachment process. We'll go over that tomorrow. Um, and if there's anything we can cover tomorrow, we'll, we'll, we'll see some good political cartoons as well. As always, I remind you, the past shapes the future. Have a great evening, and don't get impeached out there.